very much. But this was to be Ireland's day, confirmed by two late tries from the pack. The first from Locke, Gabriel Fulcher. 30-17 to Ireland. Welsh optimism, born of encouraging performances against England and Scotland, has given way to the prospect of finishing bottom of the pile again. Duncan Jones, BBC News. The top four sides in the FA Carling Premiership out of action today. The focus was on the chasing pack with Tottenham's Jason Dazelle scoring the goal that gave his side their win against Southampton and kept them in fifth place. Behind them are Everton, for whom Tony Grant scored in their win at Middlesbrough, who've now lost nine of their last ten games. At the bottom, a Goodney Bergson goal gave Bolton a surprise victory at Leeds and Kevin Gallon was Queen's Park Rangers scorer against Arsenal prior to a Bergkamp equaliser. So Bolton's position gradually improves as Southampton's deteriorates, with Manchester City moving out of the bottom three after drawing one all with Blackburn. Coventry also drew with West Ham. Wimbledon drew with Chelsea. Derby County have extended their lead at the top of the NZ League First Division after coming from behind to beat Huddersfield. 3-2 the result. Paul Simpson, the scorer of Derby's third goal. And Stoke City's promotion chances were enhanced with a 2-0 defeat of Barnsley. Their conclusive goal coming 20 minutes from time from Mike Shearer. So Derby's lead at the top is now nine points ahead of Sunderland, who play tomorrow, while a 2-1 defeat for Charlton at Portsmouth leaves them in third place. In Scotland, Paul McStay scored the first of Celtic's four, which beat Hearts, and Scott Booth scored twice for Aberdeen in the victory over Kilmarnock. Celtic's win means they're level on points with the Bells Premier Division leaders Rangers who play, who play Hibernian tomorrow. Sri Lanka have beaten India in one of the Cricket World Cup's most exciting matches so far. Batting first, India made an imposing 271 for three in their 50 overs thanks to Sachin Tendulkar's second century of the tournament. But Sri Lanka made an astonishing start in reply, scoring at 14 runs and over, with man of the match Jaya Saraya hammering a rapid 79. The run rate did drop, but Sri Lanka went on to win by six wickets with eight balls to spare. Sri Lanka are top of Group A, ahead of Australia on run rate. The group winner's quarter-final opponents are likely to be England, who play Pakistan tomorrow. Defeat would mean they'd definitely finish fourth in Group B. The Gordon Richards trained Addington Boy was the convincing winner of the day's most valuable racing prize, the Pertem's Great Yorkshire Chase at Doncaster. Expertly ridden by Mark Dwyer, Addington Boy gave no indication that he's still a novice over fences as he pulled clear of the outsider Merry Master to win by five lengths. Mark Dwyer was only riding the horse because the scheduled jockey, Tony Dobbin, was injured in a fall earlier in the afternoon. Britain's WBC World Super Middleweight Champion Nigel Benn defends his title again tonight when he fights South Africa's Sugar Boy Malinga in Newcastle in under an hour's time. Ben, who's defending his crown for the tenth time, has fought Malinga before. The pair last met nearly four years ago when Ben won narrowly on points. And you can follow the fight on BBC Radio 5 Live starting at 25 past nine. Peter. And that's all from the BBC Newsroom tonight. From Rob and me, good night. <laughs>
So I hinted uh, in East Anglia and possibly the southeast corner. That's where it'll be coldest. It'll be technically rather mild, particularly in the sunshine in western Scotland. But a frost returns tomorrow night to this southeastern corner, and the difference between Sunday's pressure pattern and Monday's pressure pattern suggests that front's going to go back again. So another cloudy day on Monday for England and Wales, a rather brighter day in Scotland where it should still feel quite mild. Good night. Now an update on today's National Lottery draw. The six winning numbers are confirmed as 9, 11, 12, 24, 41 and 45. And the bonus number is 6. Preliminary indications are that there are two jackpot winners, each winning an estimated £5.2 million. A beautiful young girl is found murdered in a Hollywood penthouse. Ted Hoffman is to defend the chief suspect. Can he get to the truth? I can be the best lawyer in the world, but if I go in unarmed, I'm gonna get my ass kicked. Murder One. One crime, one solution, one series guaranteed to get you talking. Tuesday, 10 past 9 on BBC Two. A new team for BBC One. He's objectionable. I use foul and abusive language. I pick my nose and I do it all in public. He's the object of desire. I'd like to speak to Sergeant Pascoe. In connection with? In connection with sex. He's hard-boiled. It's about police corruption. Do I get a mention? With a soft centre. You seem to think I've gone to bed with you because you're a policeman. I know it wasn't for me looks. And he's got to put up with it. DL and Pasco, an arresting combination. Begins Saturday, 16th of March, on BBC One. The great Hollywood star Gene Kelly died last month, and in tribute to his dazzling career on BBC Two, the classic musical Singing in the Rain. Lenny Henry and Harry Enfield's funny bits, plus lots more, are highlights from ten years of comic relief, The Nose at Ten, in 50 minutes. First on BBC Scotland, the truth about Olive's family secrets continues to unravel. Pauline Quirk stars in The Sculptress. You can't hate what you've never loved. Not really, not passionately. Help me. Do I ever want to do that? She's guilty. No, help me. I think it's just the two of us alone. Olive, did your father get you pregnant? My father was a homosexual. Holly, oh, please stop lying to me. Why would I lie to you about my dad being queer? You're the expert on lies. Sorry, but you didn't call. Did you get the facts? No, what facts? Of the photo. No. Is this what you're looking for? New business, Marnie? Personal matter, Mr. Whelan. Ah, oh, Reggie Whelan, managing director. We can deliver anything.